6. 6 chapter. How is everybody here? Everybody's happy? Are you doing okay? No answer. Yeah, I'm not. I'm deaf now. Huh? So we are reading 11th canto, 6th chapter, first verse. Ata Brahmatma Chattai Devai Prajasai Ravito Vyagat Bhavascha Bhuta Bhavyesho Jajau Bhuta Ganai Vrita Shukadeva Goswami said, Lord Brahma then set off for Dwaraka, accompanied by his own sons, as well is by the Devatas and the great Prajapatis. Lord Shiva, the bestower of auspiciousness to all living beings, also went, surrounded by many ghostly creatures. Commentary by Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. In the sixth chapter, the Lord is praised by Brahma and others. Understanding that the Lord desired to disappear with his dynasty, Uddhava, dear to the Lord, made a request to Krishna. The sons of Brahma were the Kumaras and others. Buddha Bhavyasha means the bestower of auspiciousness to all beings. They went to Dwaraka. This is understood in verse number four. The powerful Indra, along with the Maruts, Adityas, Vasus, Ashwinis, Ribus, Angiras, Rudras, Vishvedavas, Satyas, Gandharvas, Apsaras, Nagas, Siddhas, Charanas, Guyakas, the great sages and forefathers, and the Vidyadharas and Kinaras arrived at the city of Dwarka hoping to see Lord Krishna. By his form, Krishna, the Supreme Lord, enchanted all human beings, spread his own fame throughout the world, and destroyed all contamination within the universe. Commentary. They desired to see Krishna, who attracted all men by his form. This indicates that his body is non different from himself, unlike the jiva. It is said, Dea Dehi Vibhagas Cha Neshvati Vityate Kvachit. There is no difference in the Lord between his body and he himself. Ka Kurma Purana. In that resplendent city of Dwaraka, Rich with all superior wealth, the devatas beheld with unsaturated eyes the wonderful form of Lord Krishna. In Dwaraka, Tasyam, they saw Krishna. The devatas covered the supreme lord of the universe with flower garlands brought from the gardens of heaven. Then. They praised him, the best of the Yadu dynasty, with statements containing with charming words and ideas. The garlands were obtained from the gardens of Swarga. They praised Krishna with meaningful words in attractive verses. The Devata said, O oh Lord, Persons striving for liberation from the severe bondage of karma meditate with, you, with great devotion upon your lotus feet within their heart, dedicating our intelligent senses, vital air, mind and power of speech to you. We bow down at your lotus feet. Commentary. We offer respect to your lotus feet with our hearts the seat of intelligence, with our senses, such as the eyes, feet, and arms, with the body possessing prana. 
One offers respect using the different limbs. Offering respect with eight limbs, Shashtanga Dandavats, means using the arms, feet, knees, chest, head, eyes, mind, and words, quoted in Hari Bhakti Vilas. Persons desiring liberation meditate upon thy, those lotus feet, but do not see them. We, however, have seen those feet and thus offer respect. We, we, what great fortune we have. Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gada Dada Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama. Do you believe in God? Do you think it is possible to meet God and have his darshan like it has been described just in these verses? Where all the people, Lord Brahma's sons and the devatas and even Lord Shiva with all his ghostly followers. They all went to Dwaraka to get darshan of the Lord. Many people today, they doubt that God exists. And they argue very strongly. I guess such people have always existed. They called atheists, means for them theism or the divine doesn't have rhyme, reason or form. <coughs> Thus they say, if God would be really conscious about us, there would not be so much suffering in the world. This is one of their main arguments. So some or other the Lord has given us the chance to doubt his existence by what we can observe. This is quite common these days. People are actually in a sorrowful condition to attribute to their mind's conclusion that justice has to be on the level of their understanding and if they cannot understand any justice then they conclude that there is no justice and if there's no justice then there's also no uh, controller of judge justice or giver of justice thus they conclude in an atheism way of thinking whatever that means that's another plot, uh, story because someday say it's all accident there's there's no rhyme and reason to the creation like that or others say it's just an energy behind everything and there's no uh, specific relationship between anybody after this body is finished so the mind of the philosophers have pounced upon it and have tried to draw conclusions for themselves without devotion to a deity. Without devotion to a deity means 
you position yourself as the highest. Because you, your mind, your observing capacity becomes to you like the only thing I know, the only thing I am, that is me, that is the final conclusion, there cannot be anything higher than me. In this way, they are very dissatisfied because obviously they are also not satisfied with themselves. Who can, how can you be satisfied with yourself even if you are very proud? I forgot what I said yesterday at this time. It's only 24 hours before. I can already not remember. I don't know what is happening in the dark. I don't know what's beyond my eyesight. I'm so limited. I'm confined in my body <coughs> without even knowing who I am and how I got this body. So how can I be satisfied being surrounded by so much ignorance about the causes behind the manifestation. So in this way, those who don't believe in any higher meaning of life, they are usually not very happy. It makes them very dry. Calculative. And whatever else it may happen. Because there's so many characters. So, on the other side, the devotees, why do they believe in God? What is the reason that they come to a temple and they chant and dance? And they think, oh my God, you're so wonderful. This is the option. It's your free choice. Yes, there's wars. Yes, there's karmical encounters which are absolutely disgusting. When a hurricane wipes out 10,000 people, they lose their house and they die, then we feel, oh, what sad situation. And for us to understand that each and every, every one of these 10,000 people had their karma they had to experience, then it becomes a little shaky how we can assimilate that. But, first of all, if you know and think and understand that we all have to die, anyway, at some point, indicate, indicating that our real home is not in this world. So we all have to die, we are coming here. By concluding, by seeing, the incredible, I mean, look, we get the newspaper, we hear somebody died there, somebody died there, a little misery here, a little misery there, but eight billion people, human beings in this world, haven't kind of a good time. I mean, karmically, maybe some are poor, some are uh, in difficulties, but the greater majority of them do what they like to do. Question. We will make it the local test. Let's see how I put the question. Are you doing at this moment what you like to do? Or are you doing at this moment because you have to do it? If you do what you like to do, lift your hand. Okay, that's anonymous. Next question. In the last 10 years of your life, did you do what you like to do or you have did what you had to do by, by some obligation? Basically, I'm not talking about school time. After school, did you do what you like to do or what you somebody forced you? Huh? Or what we write the hand? Or, or which we write the hand? 
I don't understand. You should ask who, who should raise their hands. Ah, you should raise your hands if you were free to choose what you did in the last 10 years after school. You didn't get my question. You do what you like to do, Ambika. Yes. yes, always. So my point, my point is that the misery exists in this world. Like if I break my arm and I'm take, taken to the hospital, that I don't like. It is not my choice to go to a hospital, but when my arm is broken, I prefer you take me to the hospital and you not take me to the bicycle fixer. In other words, my point is 8 billion people do basically the majority what they like to do. So if we are ta talking about God's existence, God has made a people, you and me, and we are given the choice what to do. Of course, if I'm born in Brazil, it looks a little different as if I'm an Eskimo. It's different, but even the Eskimos, <coughs> they stay in Eskimo land. They could all run away to Brazil if they want. Have you ever met an Eskimo in Brazil? In other words, people like where they are. The Russians like Russia, the Germans like Germany, the French like French, and maybe they go for journeys, maybe they even uh, settle somewhere else that's possible, but if you go to the NRIs in the US and you ask them, what do you like better, US or India? Uh, most of them would say India, India, India. My India. Yeah, my Gujarat, my this, my that. In other words, we are born somewhere, we seem to like it, we are active, it seems that we are active according to what we want to do. To do. We look more or less the way we like to look, and if we don't like the way we look, then we try to do something about it, change our hair, cut, maybe, uh, paint ourselves a little bit, maybe uh, dress up different, but basically you dress what you like, you everything you do as you like. Therefore, we all have to die, but we have a lot of freedom in this world, a lot of choice. That is the fact, that's the reality. Don't come with the hurricanes and the, and the, the wars, because these are the miseries which are some other part of this creation. There is enjoyment and there's misery. There's duality. There's wisdom and there's ignorance. There's heat and there's cold. Yes, we are in the world of duality. Yes, we are in the world where we can learn. But we cannot deny that there's an orderly system in this world behind everything. Even if you consider what is the magic of this world, of this life in this world, it is so magic. You having trillions of cells. You know that each cell, each cell is a battery. It has positive and negative energy. Each one of your cells is like a little electric generator. And they are all working together and they are all vibrationally connected. My hair with my toe. And even now I am energetically connected with you through sound. What comes from my mind through the mouth goes into your ear and your mind. It is you vibrating right now. Because you are vibrating with me, we are actually like in a very intimate connection. That means that everything which happens in this world has an orderly system. Like a simple process of giving a class. There's so much system and so many voluntary people involved. I come here to give voluntary in the class. You sit here to heal, vol listen voluntarily to my words. So, Srimad 
Bhagavatam Srila Vyasadeva gave us this Bhagavatam voluntarily 5,000 years ago. He was born in an island in the Yamuna in Mathura, right around the corner. So we are reading this, but not only this, but you come from Argentina, you come from Colombia, you come from Australia, you come from uh, another Brazil, and all of them, all of these energies, all this circling, all these things, we come together here, and then we go out. We gain energy, we transmit energy, we are a continuous floating of energy. You are made up by the energies which your parents transmitted to you, what you learned in school. All of this <coughs> is a highly intensive, orderly creation. Nothing is by accident. Nothing. And also nobody can convince me that such a nice cup would just be created by accident. And somebody threw a rock and it fell on the rock. There was some iron inside and as the rock pounded down the, down the, the mountain, when it reached down there, it was a cup. You know that's foolish. And this is just a little stainless steel cup, it's nothing. One of your billions of cells has more information working inside of a cell than a big city like Agra with all piping, telecommunication, water system, electricity, Every information in a city like Agra is less than what's programmed into one of your cells. So to, to say that there is no organized system behind creation, this is such a foolish because it doesn't have any, any evidence to it. So therefore, to conclude, God does not exist because there's a few things you cannot understand. In a way, this is foolish. Now, if you tell an atheist, A, that you say I'm an atheist means you're foolish, you wouldn't become very angry. I was an atheist myself, so I, I can identify. Somebody would have told me, you're just a fool. I would have said, yeah, I'm a better fool than you. <laughs> Atheism means denying divine orders, divine system, divine energy, divine connections. And that is our choice. We do have the choice whether we want to be connected or not. Whether we want to know the harmonizing connection between each and every one. Why does God want to have so many characters? Why didn't he make us all equal? Like everybody moving the same. Like in India they do this. If you go to uh, Bulgaria, in Bulgaria, they, when they want to say yes, they say no, with their head. And if they want to say no, they say yes. So, varieties is the spice of life. Huh? Everybody has his way of gestures and things like that, but that means nothing. We are individuals. We are incredible individuals with capacities which are beyond imagination. Really imagination. 
is very hard to imagine what wonderful things human beings can do. Amazing. This morning I was talking about some construction work in Vendab with artistic input. And what the artists can do just blows your mind. Totally blows your mind. want to see the beauty of creation, see it. If you want to see how small you are before the great of all conception, feel it. If you want to offer your obeisances, do it. If you want to sing and dance in the kirtan with faith in the divine deity, dance. If you say, but I think the others should think like me, no. Nobody's obliged to feel and think like the others. That is the incredible individuality. That is the gift of God. If anybody's obliged, he don't, he don't like it. Really? It's the nature. If I say to him, this has to be your friend. He said, well, I, I respect him, it's okay, but my friend, my friend, I choose my friends. Those who I allow to come very close to me, to understand my heart, I choose them. If somebody comes to me, you have to tell me what you feel about your mother now. Who are you? How do you want me to tell you? Never. Everything is based on freedom. Relationships are based on freedom. When the freedom is denied, then we immediately touch upon the material energy of ignorance and bad karma. Like sometimes a person is taken by the authorities and jailed for something he did. And sometimes people are jailed innocently for something they did not do. But they came into the situation, they were under suspicion. Some people spend their whole life in jail innocently. Then what they think? Still in jail, they're free. That's what Haridas Taco showed us. When he was put into jail, he convinced everybody to have a big kirtan in jail. And they were singing and dancing in jail and the jail keepers went to the judge. It's not possible. Everybody in the prison is looking so happy and everybody outside the prison is so sad. How is this possible? Ever since you sent this holy person to the jail, the jail has become a place of chanting and dancing. We cannot tolerate. So this is also a fact. When you're in the proper consciousness, you can be in ecstasy in any condition. But it is very much based on your freedom. Because you have free. Freedom is an extraordinary gift. And if that freedom is restricted, then you can understand that something is not right. Now I will tell you, I will ask you a question. Did you ever restrict the freedom to somebody else? Did you ever make an animal a prisoner? Did you ever make a human being your prisoner? It's a 
very important question because like we are in the world of illusion wanting to make others our slaves or prisoners in the same way somebody may come and want, may want to make you his prisoner and his slave and usually the quest of prisoners and slaves has something to do very closely connected with marriage. Because in marriage, sometimes the other person says, you have to do exactly what I want. It's crazy, you know. I don't know how people can think that there is anything to do with love when you impose yourself on the other. But there is, that is going on in this material world. There is some people that want to make others their prisoners. They want to make animals their prisoners. It's very common. What human beings do with the animals, it is disgusting. They simply submit them by beating them. You know, even elephants, if you beat them in sensitive parts of their body, then the big elephant becomes submissive. The big horse becomes submissive. The big bull, just by a ring in her nose, becomes very sensitive and knows. So in this way, we are also sometimes prisoners in our world of material exploitation. But in the world of love, everything is based on the total surrender in freedom. You know, should not think that if I am not prisoner, then I'll be just hanging around. No. Those who are not prisoners of others, they could be under the very strict control of their own ideals. And my own ideals is working hard for the benefit of others. Because if the creation would be perfected by becoming a lazy bum, just hanging around, I do nothing. I'm so happy doing nothing. Mm -mm. That's not what this creation is asking you to do. We are not released from doing. It's a very important thing. Why are we always pushed? Do, 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 do. Of course, if we don't work, we have no money to eat. No? So that part we can understand. Okay, okay. But even if you don't need to work for money, but you have to do something, your ideals, your, your life, your connections, your friendships, your love, will always push you on. Do, 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 do. Housewife is at home. She, all she does is serve the family. When the family comes, look what I made is for you. And I was also stitching your socks. Now they're good. Whatever, you know. In this life, we can see that the people are really doers. By nature, they are doers. And the best thing you can do is serve God from the depths of your heart and be so devotional, so dedicated that you can charm the others so that you can really be endear yourself. That's the right word there. How to endear yourself. I want to endear myself. And it's not easy to endear yourself because you have to make a real effort to endear yourself to someone. God is endearing himself to us all the time. And if you don't want to see it, Poor you. Yes, I say that, my dear atheist brother and friend. Poor you if you cannot see how much God is trying to endear himself 
to us. And if you accept it, then you also want to endear yourself to others and to Him. And then life becomes a real joyful, joyful experience. Who's the Pujari today? Parvati. Okay. And And any questions from your side? Endearing, endearing, endearing. That is our, <coughs> any question there from our audience? How many people are online? Nine listener? Uh, Okay, so let us learn from Prabhupada how to endear yourself to the whole world. So that the whole world will ask, why are you so kind to me? What do you want? And then the answer is, we want you to think of Krishna and dance in ecstasy together with us. That's all we want. We don't want your money. We don't want anything from you. We only want to think for things for you. A loving devotion towards the one who is the most endearing of all, Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna is always endearing himself to Radha. And Srimad Radharani is always endearing herself to Krishna. So it is a very devotional movement and a very devotional philosophy and a very devotional ideal we have. And if you live it, you can feel it. And the more you give, the least you expect to return. And you will find out that endearing yourself to others makes you the dearest of all to God. And if you're dear to God, you're close to seeing Him personally. Because that is what is the price to pay. That if you want to see God, you have to want to endear yourself to Him 100%. Thank you. I appreciate you all.